In section 2.1, I introduced three measures of the middle, mode, median, and mean. The mean is also known as the average. In addition to measures of the middle, there are measures of the spread of data, values away from the middle. In most data sets of interest, the values are not all at the middle. Sections 2.2 and 2.3 introduce statistics that measure the spread of data. In section 2.2, the minimum, maximum, range, quartiles, and percentiles are introduced. As with measures of the middle, measures of spread are used with interval and ratio level data. In section 2.2, the examples will be quantitative, continuous, ratio level data. The examples will again use leaflet links. First, I will illustrate the concepts, and then I will demonstrate how to enter the functions into Google Sheets. The minimum is simply the smallest value in a data set. Here I have 24 leaflets. The smallest leaflet is 4.2 centimeters in length. That's the minimum value. In a spreadsheet, we'll learn that the minimum function uses equals min open parenthesis close parenthesis. The minimum will also be the zeroth quartile. I'll come back to that in just a moment. At the other end, the longest leaf, there's a tie at 14 centimeters, the longest leaf would be the maximum value. The maximum can be found from a data set using the max function, equals max, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. The first real measure of spread we'll encounter is the range. The range is equal to the maximum minus the minimum. Now, these 24 leaves have been ordered from smallest to largest. They are in order. The median, which we can count it in our last video, is the middle of an ordered set. And at the middle, well, the middle here is between the 12th leaflet and the 13th leaflet. These leaflets, being 24, split into a set of 12 smaller, 12 larger. So the median is halfway between those two leaflets. Now they're both 12, so halfway between 12 and 12 is 12. So the median for this data set is 12. The median will also be known as a second quartile because if you look at all of the leaves the median is two quarters of the way through the 24 leaf data set. We're 12 leaves through the 24 leaves. These 12 are the first two quarters of the data set and these two are the last two quarters of the data set. Indeed, if we split the first half, the first 12, into two equal pieces, keeping their order as seen, then the place between the sixth and the seventh leaf is the first quartile, one quarter of the way through the data. This is also known as the 25th percentile. Now, the number at that would be halfway between the 8.5 and the 9.0 leaf on the end there. Halfway between 8.5 and 9.0 would be 8.75. So doing it this way, we'd get a first quartile of 8.75. Spreadsheets use a function to calculate the first quartile, and they may or may not get the exact same answer. So the first quartile and third quartile have some subtleties as to how you calculate them, and so you'll get different answers depending on which formula you use. And spreadsheets use a slightly different formula than we use when we're splitting them up physically, uh, as, you, as is seen here. The median happens after two quarters. There's the first two quarters. The median happens after two quarters, so that's the second quartile. It's also 50% of the way through the data, so it is the 50th percentile. Likewise, after three quarters of the data is the third quartile. You can see the functions that we'll be using later in Google Sheets. The blank spot is where the 
range will go for the data. The third quartile is also known as the 75th percentile. Second quartile, third quartile. If you're all the way through the data, you're at the fourth quartile, quartile 4, also known as the 100th percentile. The value there will be 14 centimeters. That is the maximum value. Indeed, the maximum is the same as the 100th percentile, and it's the same as the fourth quartile. Fourth quartile, third quartile, second quartile, first quartile, 43210. This is why this minimum value, the smallest leaf at 4.2 centimeters, is referred to as the zeroth percentile. It is the point at which you're through zero of the data. It's the zeroth quartile, the zeroth percentile. It's also the same value as the minimum. The quartiles, quartiles 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, can be arranged on a piece of paper as seen here. Quartile 0, quartile 1, quartile 2, quartile 3, and quartile 4 vertically. And I've just made lines next to them, and there'd be values attached to the right side. We'll tackle that later on a, a spreadsheet and in another piece of software. The, you can see that quartile 0 is the minimum, quartile 2 is the median, and quartile 4 is the maximum. If I add a few lines to this diagram, I can get this diagram here. All I've done is connected some of my lines that were here vertically. This then is called a box and whisker diagram. The bottom of the diagram is the minimum and the top is the maximum. A couple things to note. The maximum minus the minimum is the range. So quartile 4 minus quartile 0 is equal to the range. There's another new statistic we'll meet. Quartile 3 minus quartile 1 will be called the interquartile range. This particular diagram with the median, and there's a middle line in the box, gets its name from the names of the parts of the diagram. The box spans from quartile 1 to quartile 3. Above the box is the upper whisker and the upper fence. Below the box is the lower whisker and the lower fence. If there are outliers, then outliers will appear as circles beyond the upper and lower fence. Outliers are, occur when a data value is more than 1.5 times the interquartile range below the first quartile, or more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above the third quartile. There's also an extreme outlier if you get beyond three interquartile ranges past either the third quartile or below the first quartile. We'll use software to identify whether there are any outliers in our data. Next, I'll be showing you how to enter this data and, and the associated functions in a Google Sheet spreadsheet. I'll actually have the data already entered and go directly to the functions. I've gone ahead and opened up the Google Sheet spreadsheet into which I've already entered the leaflet links. You can see in D2 that I've already entered the count function, which gives me the sample size, the mode function, which tells me that the mode is 14, the most frequently occurring leaf length, the median, which is 12 centimeters, as found in the earlier part of the video, and the mean, which is calculated using the average function as seen at the bottom of the screen. You'll notice that my data is in A2 to A25. The minimum function is simply equals the minimum, and here again you can see the min appears up here, so I can just tap on the function bar there, and I'll enter A2 to full colon, A25, and the minimum is 4.2, um, as expected. The maximum, we know that's 14, but we'll go ahead and use a function in a larger data set. We wouldn't necessarily know. A2 to A25 it has to be started with an equals, but can edit that back in, and indeed it's 14. The range 
I'll tap in the enter text, tap on the equals. I'm just going to tap in D7, and the D7 is green, just as the background is green. The spreadsheet is entering the formula for me, and then I'll go ahead and tap on D6, and the D6 is in red, and the background is in red. So showing me which cells are involved in this calculation. The range is just 14 minus 4.2, which is 9.8. The quartile will be our first function that has an equal sign in it. I'll start typing quartile, and as soon as I type Q, I can see quartile, so I'll tap on quartile. And the range is A2 to A25, and this is new. We'll tap a comma, and then which quartile we want. And you can see a little help bubble is reminding me of what quartile number goes after the comma. In this case, I want quartile 0, so I'll type a 0, and I'll go ahead and press the green check, and it's the minimum as expected. The first quartile will be slightly different than the one we obtained working with the leaves on the sheet because the quartile function uses a algorithm to calculate the quartile that's different than the way we might do it if we were working with it physically. And so Working with it physically, we obtained the first quartile of 8.75. The algorithm generates an answer of 8.875. For the purposes of this course, we'll use the value provided by the spreadsheet on homeworks and tests. We'll use the one generated by the algorithm rather than the one we might get physically. We'll be working primarily with number sets, and we'll use the spreadsheet to give us our answers. A, the second quartile, A2 to A25, comma 2, should be the same as the median, and it is. The third quartile equals the quartile A2, full colon, A25, comma 3. The third quartile is 14. You might recall that the last eight the uh, last seven leaf lengths are 14 centimeters long, and that is also the maximum. That is equal to the quartile A2, full colon, A25, comma 3, sorry, comma 4, will give us the fourth quartile, which will be the same as the maximum. Earn the quartile range, we tap equals, we tap the third quartile minus the first quartile, and I'm just tapping with my finger, and that will give me the interquartile range of 5.125. That's the mechanics of entering the functions to calculate those values. Generating the chart is something Google Sheets cannot do. To generate the chart that I showed you, we'll need to copy this data. I'll tap on A1, and then I'll put my finger back on A1 uh, and drag down to A25. Then I will tap in the middle of the blue shade and up will come a menu bar and I'll tap copy so I can copy it. I'm going to use a website that will be linked below to do this. The box plot our website and I'm going to go to the second tab in that the data upload and I'm going to tell it that I want to paste my statistics in. I'll tell it down here near the bottom that it's tab delimited, that the separator is a tab because spreadsheets use tabs. In this case that won't matter too much because I'm pasting in only a second, a single column. I'm going to long tap the box and the paste will appear and I press paste and there's my data loaded into the box. Scroll back to the, uh, uh, sorry, scroll to the bottom and it says data visualization. If you're on a browser or on a tablet, these tabs will likely appear at the top. But here on my smartphone, they appear at the bottom. And I can see the data down below. I tap on data visualization. There are a lot of options. But on a smartphone, I scroll down and across. And there's my box plot. Now, the box plot is missing an upper whisker. That's because the third quartile and the fourth quartile are both 14. So the top of the box is also the upper whisker. The values can be seen on the left side. And so the lower whisker is at 4.2. And you've got the, the, the first quartile. 
the median up at 12, and the third and fourth quartile at 14. That's the box plot for this particular uh, data set. Uh, if I ever needed to use this box plot elsewhere, I can uh, potentially download it as a number of different file types, but my own preference is usually just to use screen capture. However, you do screen capture on your own phone, and uh, from that you can then edit the image that you have. Uh, I can screen capture this and then later use, use it if I need to copy and paste it into a homework or somewhere else. I'll just save that to my uh, phone, as it were. That's the minimum, maximum range, and the quartile functions, quartiles 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, along with the interquartile range. By the way, BoxPlotR will show us if there are outliers in the data. We won't have to manually calculate whether or not something is an outlier. That's set back here in the options up above. It has settings for how it calculates outliers and how they'll appear in, in the uh, diagram underneath these options here. But we'll leave the options at the default values. Uh, that will work just fine for us. Links to the textbook, links to the Boxplot R site will be included in the description below.